beautiful, gorgeous, Karen Dash anything. It doesn't matter if it's their colored pencils or their neo colors. Basically, Karen Dash creates beautiful art supplies. And as you know, I'm an art supply nerd and I love to explore different supplies. And if you want to know why, because my reason for exploring different supplies is very unique to anybody else, make sure you watch some other videos to find out why. On the table here, I have a bunch of Neo Colors. I have a pack of 10 Neo Color 2s, as well as Neo Color 1, and then the full set of Neo Color 2. And the set of Neo Color 2 versus Neo Color 1, as you can see, there's definitely a size difference. Neo Color 1 versus Neo Color 2 is that one is water soluble and one is not. So let's open this. I have had this for a hot minute. You can see it's so scratched up and just kind of, it looks worn out. I got it, geez, I want to say maybe even a year ago. And I haven't really used anything in here. I bought them independently. I have some cups here with independent ones I purchased initially from the local art store to see if I liked them before I invested because they are spendy. And then I went ahead and bought this and I went through a move and all this stuff and I really have kind of been fearful <laughs> to, to use them. I don't mean like fearful to use the ones that I have out, but you know, it looks so pretty and I'm like, I don't want to ruin it. And there's like two colors that I've used out of here that have started to wear down a little tiny bit because I ran out of them as the independents. You can buy these open stock. So if you don't want to buy a whole set, you can buy them open stock or you can buy this cute little neo color too, as you could say, aquarel, which means they are water soluble. The neo color ones, they are not water soluble. And there's more watercolor soluble ones than there is non-watercolor soluble. So for over a hundred years, we have been accompanying you in your expression of creativity. Your precious Karen Dash box and their bright colors have been carefully produced by our craftsmen in our unique manufacturer in Geneva. So they give you some stickers. These are the colors in the 10 pack and I, I'm gonna do a review on this independently because sometimes people just want a review of a tiny single little pot, tiny little single product, and this is tiny and single and little and cute. So, okay, let's put it back together. So, in this beautiful box, let's open this one real quick, this one's empty but this will show you the size of the Neo Color 1. And here are those Neo Color 1s. I have them in cups, but I'm actually looking at setting them up differently, which I'll share with you later, just like my colored pencils, which I'll also share with you in a little bit. So let's move this out of the way and let's open this up. In this video, we're gonna get really nerdy. So. If you don't want to sit here for a extended period of time and watch me go through each one of these colors on a piece of paper, then you might want to not watch this video. If you are super nerdy and you're like, please show me every color, then stay tuned because that is what we are going to do today. Alrighty then. I'm not sure if this is big enough. I usually draw some squares and map it out, but I'm not gonna do that because I'm just ready to get in and do the thing. Now, really quick before we get started, let me show you a little bit about these. So they are four inches long, and I know this because I measured them yesterday, looking for a container. I had wanted to stick them in a container like this because I also haven't been using them because I find it kind of a pain to keep opening this, keeping them in some sort of order and using them. I know that probably sounds weird to people, but for me, 
I need to like grab and go and throw things in. I need them not to be super organized. And the same with my colored pencils. They used to be in a box like up to two days ago. And it's probably been in a box for like three years where they're all color coded. And then half the time I'm using them, I have them stacked on the table and they're rolling around. And then finally I decided, you know what? I'm gonna put them in these little cups. And you know what? It has been better. Don't get me wrong. The box is really lovely looking and I like the way they store that way. So I have a couple other boxes over there that I store color pencils that I don't use as much. Some of my graphitants, my ink tents, stuff like that. Okay, so they are considered like a crayon. Apparently I say that weird, according to my partner. And as you use it, you can start pulling the paper off. The one thing I dislike is the name so close to the top and the number at the bottom is so hard to see. I don't even remember where it's at. I'm all looking. There's a number somewhere. See, I have different ones from different places. So here is right here. Here you go. There is the number. On this one, I'm not seeing it. I don't know why. But that is part of the problem. It's really hard to see and it's hard to figure out what something is. If you're using a colored pencil, you can use it down to here and you still get to see the number. You can still figure it out. And that is with a polychromos and that is also with a Caran d'Ache colored pencil. You can eat that pencil way down and you still are probably going to see that number. With these, you lose it pretty quickly. So you lose that name. And I spent over, geez, probably an hour one day trying to figure out what color I was using because I couldn't find the number on it. Like this, it's also, and it was like this too before I got stuff on it. Some of the numbers are printed very poorly or they're missing numbers. So that's gonna be my biggest gripe. Otherwise, I don't have any other gripes. Oh no, I, I do. But it's it's a it's a non um, it's not a real problem. <laughs> Is using this in a sharpener, people will use hand sharpeners, people will use razors to sharpen these. If you are going to sharpen them, which you probably are going to need to, unless you want to use them blunt all the time, which you may. You will need a completely different sharpener because it will ruin your sharpener for anything else. Didn't know this. And I was sharpening these along with my colored pencils. And then all of a sudden, and I wish I had one that had stuff on it. All of a sudden, the tip of my colored pencil. Oh, no, I do. I have one right here. I can see it. Is it right there? Of course I saw it. No, I can't get it out of the tray. Here, let's go. Ah. So... This is kind of a good example, is it would get the neo color all over the next thing you put in there. And then if you, you don't pay attention, you're gonna ruin something that you are doing. So you have to have a dedicated sharpener or a hand sharpener. The other thing is when you're sharpening them, they also have a bunch of stuff that comes off it and it feels wasted. Unlike a colored pencil, when you're sharpening a colored pencil, you're not really wasting that much of it. But when you are sharpening these, boy, you are wasting a lot. So what I started to do with some of my favorite colors is get these little tiny, these are gonna roll away. Get these little teeny tiny makeup containers. And I started putting stuff in there. You see what I'm saying? Like that's a lot. There's a little bit of paper in there. I'll get that later. Wait, no, I got it now. That's a lot. Like, let me pour it out of my hand. That is a lot of pigment. And these, like I said, they're spendy. So for me to like put that much in a sharpener and toss it seems just terrible. And what's great about this, you can use it. So let me open the cobalt blue. So you just add some water to it and you basically have you know, colored watercolor. And for me, I think that 
And that is one of the best solutions to not waste it if you're going to sharpen it because like I said a lot comes off when you sharpen it like a lot you remember being a kid and sharpening you know color or uh, sharpening crayons crayons I say crayons because I'm from the Midwest and I've spent a lot of time in Canada and apparently it is crayons and that's what my partner keeps telling me over and over again Lady, it is crayon. Apparently I don't say pumpkin right either. That's appropriate and the right way to say it. But I apparently say it like a three-year-old. I say pumpkin. Speaking of pumpkins, this is a beautiful orange. All right. So let's clean up this little bit of dusty mess we made here. And let's take a look at these. They're gorgeous. They are beautiful. They are just so good on paper. You can leave them completely as they are without adding water to them, or you can add water to them. So I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. Do a little thing here. I'm going to zoom in. And then I was thinking maybe taking the brush and kind of pulling it over next to it. That are doing two squares, but I don't think we need two squares. That works. And you have to work it a little bit sometimes. It's like activating gouache or something. Now, the texture of these are very waxy, like a crayon. So to make this easier, I am going to do a few. Let's talk about the colors here real quick, too. This is Sahara Yellow, that first one. And uh, this is a orangish yellow. And the third one is a apricot. Apparently people in California say apricot. This is considered This one is considered flesh. I think they may have changed the name of that. They did with colored pencils. And this is a, a salmon. All right. Ah, I almost threw it. This is a salmon pink. And uh, this is a pink. I'm hoping the sheet's gonna be <laughs> big enough. And then we have purple, is that right? I always find it interesting that when I see the color purple in a lot of different art supplies, it's never what I think. It always looks more maroon to me. Purple, violet. Yeah, let's get this whole line here. Purple, violet, mauve. And then aubergine. We got two more, three more. Lilac. And then we have uh, violet. Indigo blue. And if for some reason this goes really nicely on this piece of paper and I'm able to somehow make them all fit, I'll make sure to create a 
PDF of it, and I'll write the names on it too. Okay. So that was that apricot. This is the flesh. And this is the salmon. And this is the pink, I think. Salmon pink. And the next one is pink pink. And now we have purple. That's an intense color. And then we have violet purple. Right, we have done two. And then this one. Grab more water here. And that one is mauve. Let's scoot this up. We have, let's see, a night blue. I noticed I started kind of going the other direction. And now I'm feeling compelled to make this move over a little bit more so it's not so weird. Okay. Don't mind me. Then we have indigo blue. And then we have a royal, royal blue. And then we have an ultramarine. Yeah, we should be able to get these all on here. I think we're like through half, getting to the bottom, we're through one and a half. So that means there should be one, there should be four rows. That's what I'm thinking is gonna happen. That seems about right. What is this? Blue sapphire. All right. So now, as I get the water on my brush, and now we have that, I'm throwing things, okay. Interesting. This one out of all of them has their old logo. This is like one random old one in here. Everything else has their new logo. This is their very old, old logo. All right. This is night blue. And the next one we're looking at is going to be the indigo. Okay. And then the next one, you're looking at the uh, that royal blue. It's like a purple color. I'm going to bring these out a little bit more, too. I can bring that out a tiny bit more so you guys can see that a bit. I'm getting there. All right. One-fourth of the way done. I was talking to my partner about this. He's like, you're really going to go through every color? And I said, yes, there are people who actually want to watch that. And I am one of them. I watch videos all the time with people going through art supplies. So the next one is just going to be blue. And now we'll have a little bit of a guide. And then the next one is going to be cobalt blue. And then the next one will be a light blue. Periwinkle. Sky blue.
light cobalt blue. Then we have a turquoise, one of my favorite colors. And then we have turquoise green. And then we have Ronnie's green. Feel free to correct me if I'm pronouncing anything weird. So we're going to go backwards and we're going to do that Veronese green. And then we were going to do that tur Turkish, is that turquoise? Look like it said Turkish right there, but it's turquoise. move this one out a little bit further too. Okay, this is turquoise blue. Light cobalt, cobalt blue. Sky blue. This is almost white. It's barely showing up there. And then get that one. Make sure we're keeping them in order. Light blue. Oops, we gotta use this uh, purple one first. Periwinkle. And then we need to do light blue. And then we need to do cobalt blue. Mm. Gorgeous, gorgeous color. Cobalt blue. And then we have just blue, blue. I think this is my favorite, and I like these a lot for the blues. Anyway, just gorgeous colors. These are beautiful colors. We have moss green. The one before that was a chromium oxide green. And this is gonna be something beautiful. This is, look, see? You know, halfway gone and the name is just not barely there. So this one's a dark green. At least it had part of the word dark. And then Greenish blue. And then malachite green. And then emerald green. Phyllosilene green? That's a word to say. I can't say that. Phyllocyanine? Phyllocyanine green. Old logo. Right. And then we have three more on this row. Green grass. And then we have bright green. I'm slowly moving closer to over here, it looks like. Just at an angle. And then yellow green. All 
All right. Let's go back up. And let's do chromium oxide green. Beautiful green. And the name, nope, that's moss green. I'm trying to think which one was that weird name. It's too focused on the colors. This is dark green. This is greenish blue. And then this is malachite green. Is that right? Yeah, I guess it is. Just looked a little blue for that. And then we have emerald green. And that definitely looks very Wizard of, Oda, Wizard of Oz ish. And there's that phthalo cyanine. And then we have grass green. And then we have bright green. And then the last one we have is yellow green with the dog hair. All right, let's do these first and then let's do these first and then I'll remove the top because we've hit, we've hit the top. We've finished the top of the box. So Chinese yellow, or Chinese green, my bad. Looks like yellow. And then we have light green. And then we have this beautiful jade green. All right. On to the next layer. All right, here's the next layer for you. And let's start with pale yellow. Oops. Let's start with pale yellow. And then we have lemon yellow. And then we have canary yellow. I do think these other two could have been a little wider. So there's more pigment there to spread around. All right, so canary yellow, yellow. And then golden yellow. And then orange. And then we have light fast orange. Flame red. These two colors look gorgeous together. Actually, this all three of them across look really nice together. Vermilion.
It was light cadmium red. And this is scarlet. Ruby red. Carmine. And then we have crimson al crimson aliz alir crimson alizarin. I think that screwed me up because I'm always used to hear alizarin crimson. And it's funny because we went through all of here and we have one left. One left. So we'll take one from the top here, which is burnt sienna. Right. Let's take it from the top. So we have a pale yellow. Lemon yellow. I think this one's just a yellow. Nope, canary yellow. And then the next one is yellow. And then the following one is golden yellow. Orange. I did not realize that we were completely out of view. So what we went through, let me point it out again to you. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I believe that is going to be. So this is that light fit. So we're going to redo this. This is a light fast orange. And this is going to be the flame red. And this is going to be that vermilion color and this right here is the beautiful light cadmium red and this here is that scarlet and then we're just gonna get this to come up again and we have that ruby red we have this carmine and then we have that crimson alizarin but i call it alizarin crimson because that's what it's mostly called and then we got real close to the bottom <laughs> and then now we have the what is that burnt si burnt sienna okay burnt sienna there right on that edge Let's make sure I do not go out of the window of the video this time. So, English red. And then we have the saffron. Russet. Got a little bit too much water going on there. And then the cinnamon. Definitely looks like a cinnamon stick to me. And then we have raw sienna. And we have a golden ochre. And then we have an ochre. And then we have an olive brown. That's a nice color. And then we have the dark olive. Then we have umber. That's a beautiful color. And here 
we have that Van Dyke brown and then we have some regular brown pull some more color over there and then we have that Toledo brown and that's a good example you have to be careful when you're using them because you can break them if you are pushing too hard so there's that Toledo brown and we have that beautiful black and we have that gray black here and then we have that sepia color oops get that out of there and that's the grayish black and then this is the Payne's gray and this was that dark gray here So back to that gray at the top and then we have silver gray and doing something like this is really helpful so that you can know what your colors look like on paper. That's a light gray and then white which you really won't be able to see. And then we have the gold. And bronze. And silver. And I got a little bit of bronze left on there. So probably watch that. Make sure you clean your brushes well. And speaking of metallics, they have a ton of metallics. They have a, a scarlet, they have a scarlet, they have a pink, they have an ash gray, they have the silver which you saw, they have the bronze, they have the violet, they have the phalocyanine green, they have the gold, gold gold, and phalocyanine blue, which is interesting because I don't remember seeing a phalocyanine blue over there. So I guess these are the same thing, just different packages. So the last thing I want to share with you is that I was storing them in here in little cups like this, but I have found that as they start getting small, they fall in here and they're hard to get to. So I got myself some of these this isn't the ones that I got I only had one of these and then I went and found some online not exactly like this but this was pretty cool and then they can just lay and I could color coat them color code them not coat them color code them like I did my color pencils so I can stick them right under here like that rather than these sat in front like this and like I said they get they get kind of hard to get to but even if there's a teeny tiny one if I have a tiny one they can just lay in here or lay in here and it'll be easier to deal with so the last thing I want to share is this Kohenor holder and it's really great for bigger things so these neo colors fit into here really nicely so like that and you do this and now you have total control be careful not to break them they are like crayons you know don't push super hard and you can use it for things like the neo pastels so for example if I wanted to use this I can also put it in here and use this it is a great tool I love it very much I only have one because they're very expensive they don't fit color pencils 
or anything like that. This is really for a bigger, bigger uh, art supply. So yeah, and it's comfortable in your hand and you can put it in pretty far. So, you know, for these, it might be long. I don't want, I'm not gonna need to, you know, keep it out like this. But if you wanna use something and maybe even you just wanna have the grip and you are afraid you're gonna break it because I break them all the time. <laughs> you know, here's a little tip I broke off the other day. I break them all the time and it's a big bummer. I try to tape them, it doesn't work great. This is also another way to preserve it if you wanted to stick it all the way in there and then you're not worried about the pressure if you're needing to push hard. So that's pretty cool too. And I think that is about it. I'll make sure to link everything down below. I will put up this picture as a PDF download underneath with all the numbers underneath it. So you can, if you like a color, you can download it and figure it out. And I'll make sure I link to, since I showed you these, these Neo Pastels, I'll link to them. I'll link to the Neo Color 2, the big box. I'll link to the Neo Color 1, small box. I'll make sure to link to this little 10 pack. And I'll make sure to share with you guys these trays if you're interested, as well as these little makeup jars that I use. And of course, this. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. You also can find a bunch of super secret, amazing content on Patreon where I share super secret content with my patrons. All right, I'll see you guys in another video.